Hey everyone, it's Alan Brockstein from 420 Investor and New Cannabis Ventures here with your weekly update on the cannabis market, which wasn't fun this week, was it? Uh, the whole market wasn't fun. Um, this is uh, based on a weekly review that I publish, and I include a link to this in the summary. And uh, if you want, you can sign up to just get it. But if you like to listen rather than read, that's why I do this. And I'm trying to build a, a bigger dialogue with those who support me. And uh, the, the number one group of people who support me when it comes to cannabis are my subscribers at 420 Investor. And I, I certainly hope that if it's appropriate for you, that you'll become one as well. And uh, uh, that's this is actually for, for them too. Uh, the written piece is really for them. Um, so my job is to keep all my subscribers informed of what's going on in the cannabis market. And uh, this week, the big news was only that Illinois saw a five, almost a 5% sequential decline in August in its adult use cannabis sales. When you factor in the medical cannabis, it's likely uh, going to be down uh, uh, even more sequentially. And year over year, it grew 6%. But when you factor in the medical change, it's, it's probably going to be close to unchanged. I, I don't know. We'll get that information next week. Now, I published uh, more than five pieces, but the five I wanted to share... Uh, with my subscribers and with you are I did my third uh, feature article for the monthly 420 investor newsletter which is a different service that I offer uh, uh, it's for two hundred dollars a year and it's this one was 17 pages they all have three feature articles and my third one which I distributed to my full members uh, earlier, uh, a week ago, was uh, the title of it was MSOS is a bad cannabis bet. And no, I don't think you should short it. But I think if you like the idea of MSOS, you should think long and hard about what I wrote about, which is why it's not going to be a great investment compared to alternatives. So what am I talking about? Well, uh, you'll have to subscribe to read it, and then I, I will answer any questions you have. But I, it's all the alternatives are the stocks it owns or doesn't own, and not other ETFs. Um, I also shared a preview of Juicy Holdings Q2 financials, and then I put out the three Friday pieces, which I put out yesterday also. But a week ago, they're, they're all linked, and. Uh, it's a subsector review where I go over different stocks. Uh, I gave quarter-to-date returns, uh, and the stocks were aggregated by their market cap and their subsector. And so you can look at similar stocks and see how they're doing. And then the, the second one of the three was uh, the 420 Investor Model Portfolio Composition. Uh, and in that piece... I compare my two longer-term focus model portfolios to the Global Cannabis Stock Index by subsector exposure so that my subscribers who care uh, can see how my portfolios look relative to the index. And then finally, the piece that I told you that this review is based upon, it's a written piece, and I wrote it a week ago also, and uh, I shared with you then uh, a link and uh, you can click on that link it works it's a public if you want to see from two weeks ago or I'm going to put the one from yesterday in the summary of this now last week I forgot to, to do this part and I thought about re-recording it and getting uh, this part in and um, I decided not to and I didn't hear a single complaint by the way and maybe in the future I will save time by just leaving this in writing uh, and not going over it in dialogue. 
But uh, I do, it's written, and I will say today, that uh, the news that came out for the, the 31 names that are on my focus list uh, that I felt like was important enough to share, uh, AIR uh, reopened, no, opened its relocated dispensary in Dania Beach, Florida. Uh, CEAD uh, adjourned its annual meeting and pushed it out to October due to a lack of a quorum. Cresco opened three additional Sunnyside dispensaries in Florida, giving it 19 in the state. Jushi reported their Q2 financials a little bit ahead on revenue, a little bit behind on adjusted EBITDA with an outlook reduction as well. Um, IIPR uh, put out a press release, Cheerleaf did not. Uh, so they're buying the cultivation facility of Cureleaf in Massachusetts and leasing it back to them. They paid $21.5 million or a little over $200 a square foot. And uh, I don't think it's a big deal, but it's just, you know, people, a lot of people think IIPR is dead. Not true. Uh, Lowell, uh, I'm, I, I think I mentioned this last week, but uh, I put in there because it came out late in the day Friday a week ago that they boosted their convertible note financing by $2.2 million to a total of $6.4 million. Uh, Scott's miracle Grow, that was big news. Uh, they cut their cash flow outlook for the fiscal year ending September of 2022, which is now, uh, to, uh, they, they doubled the amount of the ca negative free cash flow, essentially. And they gave a range, but the midpoint of the range was double. Um, Till Oldings opened its third medical dispensary, and it's got a great location uh, in Massachusetts. Uh, it's right near Harvard, and uh, it's, I think it's called Inman Square. And uh, we use, at New Campus Ventures, we uh, published a, uh, a little article, and I looked at it on the map. Cambridge, Massachusetts is great. Um, Tilray, this was really not, who cares? But they expanded uh, their good supply brand products, uh, number of products. Urban Grow uh, announced, well, that was also Friday a week ago, but uh, after I'd already put out that weekly report, they announced the r resignation of uh, their good supply, I'm sorry, their uh, president and COO, James Dennity. And uh, finally, Verano opened three stores in Florida, giving it 59. Uh, which I think is in second place compared to the 120 uh, truly has. Um, I see I made a mistake in my thing. Uh, I'll get that fixed in a moment. So the market kind of stunk this week. When I say that, you're probably thinking, yeah, the stock market stunk. Well, no, the, uh, it did. But the global cannabis stock index fell 4% during the week. And uh, it, it still held the 52-week closing low that was set two weeks ago. Uh, but it, it was worse than the S&P 500, not by much. The S&P 500 fell 3.2%. Like I said, it was not a good week. And uh, the uh, index is now down 55.3% year-to-date, which is just horrible. And uh, like I, I don't think I ever would have predicted how bad it could be. And uh, I do think things are going to be better. I've written about that at New Canvas Ventures, and uh, I'm not really going to go over it now, but I'm optimistic the second half will see an improvement. And uh, we're, we're well into the second half right now. It's one-third over. Um, and then uh, I run three model portfolios at, at New Canvas Ventures. The oldest is a trading one, and uh, it's called Flying High, and it had a rough week. Um, the index, I'm sorry, the um, model fell 5.3%, not a great week. But in July, it was up 21.7%, and in August, it was up 3.9%, uh, well ahead of the index in both those months. And that leaves it up 18.7% in Q3 thus far, uh, which is, you know, 70% over. And the index is down a half a percent. So I'm getting it done there. 
recently. And then uh, 420 Opportunity, which was up 19.3% in uh, July and 1.6% in August, uh, fell 4.8% this week, so a little worse than the market. And it's still up 15.5% quarter to date compared to the minus a half a percent return of its index. And then uh, 420 Quality, um, was, which was down 5.3% this week, a little bit worse, um, it was up 20.4% in July, so a little bit better than 420 Opportunity, and, but only up a half a percent in August. And then combining in this week's, uh, well, September 1st and September 2nd, it's now up 14.5% year to date, I'm sorry, quarter to date, and uh, uh, so that's a little bit worse than 420 Opportunity. So the other thing we have is a calendar, and uh, oh, I was spending a lot of time on that. We, we are out of the busy season. Uh, there are a couple of model of uh, company uh, schedules uh, for calls in, in September. They're at New Canvas Ventures. You can find the calendar there, uh, but not until the 15th and the 20th uh, for High Tide and uh, uh, Aurora. And so the only thing I have on the uh, uh, calendar for this week on that page is that on, on Wednesday night, I'm having a chat with my subscribers at 420 Investor. And uh, those chats go really well. They can ask any question they want, and I try to answer. Uh, so with that, you have a great week. And uh, let me wish you a happy Labor Day as well. Uh, enjoy the time off. And uh, I hope you uh, have a good celebration. Take care.